If you subscribed to my channel and took a look at some of my Linux videos, then you might have already noticed that I have what I like to call a hot take on Linux. But then again proceed to use it as my daily driver. What? Why are some of my videos so negative towards Linux, even though I seem to run it just fine? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video, where I'm going to explain on why I'm making these videos, what my personal experiences have to do with it, and of course, what my actual experience is really like. Stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe. Alright, let's dive in into the mind of Michael. First of all, let's talk about some fundamental things on how I got to know Linux in the first place. It was October 2019 when I was introduced to the Linux operating system and of course, while Linux is technically just the kernel, an operating system like Debian, Ubuntu or Fedora can be called a Linux operating system simply because it is far easier to understand and to explain when talking about technical aspects. Over the past three years, I've had professional training on how I can operate the Linux distribution Debian as a server for storage, websites, user management and much more. I learned about desktop environments, cron shops, package managers and already used my knowledge in some real case scenarios. So yeah, it was a pretty practical study program. Another aspect of it however was the importance of usability. Many Linux users insist on how awesome, fast and easy to use the terminal is. But for a moment, hold up and think about this. Why did Windows and macOS succeed in convincing people that everyone can use a computer. Both of these operating systems have a command line and while some install solutions are not the best, you can easily swap them for something like the bash shell, which can be found on most Linux distros. But yet no one uses it. What are even the advantages of a command line anyway? Well actually, there are a lot. Scripting, automatic server and client deployments in companies, Tidal system integration and easy debugging simply wouldn't be possible without a command line. Oh, and did I also mention that the more services are running, the higher the chance is that one of them produces an error. This is where most Linux, but also some Windows servers in rare cases, are being installed without a desktop environment. The terminal is a very fast and great way to handle installations, copy tons of files and much much more. But it's not meant for a regular I'm just working in an office and using Word and Excel user. This is where a graphical user interface short GUI comes in. It started off small by trying to make icons that resemble an object that is being used for that purpose in real life. This is done so that the user knows, oh, this looks like something I can place a file in. And it works that way. Now let's look at the terminal. Um, what should I do? Help. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. All right. What now? What is even installed on my computer? How do I open a program? See where I'm going with this? The main difference between the command line and the GUI is that the user can learn most of a GUI by cross-matching it with something in real life or by just experimenting. Oh, a right click on my mouse does open this. What does paste do? And so on. With a command line you need training or at least some reference of what is even possible with it. Documentation and training is key here. After that, of course it becomes easy to use. It's not complicated at all actually, but you need to learn it with documentation and guides. But here's the thing, no one wants to learn something that they are not interested in. So forcing the terminal is not ideal if you want to increase the Linux adoption rate. Alright, I think I've explained the importance of a GUI quite enough now. So let's talk about something else that really annoys me. Gatekeeping. Some individuals think that bringing in more users will hurt the Linux desktop in general. And I've seen many different comments about this. Some of them don't want desktop applications, some of them are afraid of an increase in malware, and some are just… well I don't know actually. Gatekeeping is a real problem and the funny thing is that some of them actually think that Windows and Mac users are a joke while also refusing to let them onto Linux because then it increases its popularity. Don't be like that. Linux is free. It is free because you don't have to pay for anything. And much more important, it's free as in freedom. No one should be excluded. Everyone who wants to use it should be able to use it. And we as the community should support this decision and help them ease into it. Additional help by providing a solid GUI does not hurt anyone. The command line will never go away for those who want to use it. It didn't disappear on Windows. It didn't disappear on macOS. For those who need it and know how to use it, it will always be here. But enough of that. 
Let's talk about my personal experiences and why some of them offended some in the community. This is especially important for those who tell newcomers that they should go back to Windows and Mac OS if something does not work on Linux right away. By the way, you shouldn't use an open source and free operating system if you cannot support others that want to switch to it. Users are often not even complaining about something that used to work on Windows. They just say, I have problems sharing my screen on Linux. After they get some idea that it could be due to a Wayland issue and its security measures and tell them that they need it for their business, work or school, they immediately get bashed for trying to use Linux. Why? It's not their fault. Alright, that was a long story about myself and some of the observations that I made. So let's talk about the other side. What is my actual experience like and why do I keep using Fedora as my daily driver? As you might know, I have made a couple of videos that are addressing several issues. Be it Wayland, Pipewire and Pulse Audio problems or simply some other things that are not that user friendly yet. But the truth is, it is really not as bad as it seems. I'm using all of my programs that I used on Windows on a daily basis as well. My NVIDIA GPU works on X11 and Wayland. Sure, there are some downsides here and there, but it's nowhere near some of the problems that I've experienced on Windows. Heck, most of the pre-installed Windows applications of hardware vendors cause more problems than the ones in my videos. I've complained about Pipewire and not handling my audio device correctly. Yeah, it mixes the mono channel into surround for some unknown reason, but essentially the audio interface works as expected. I did my research, trust me. I use Fedora as any other operating system. I boot it up, I open my applications or games and do my stuff. I can watch YouTube videos, Amazon Video or Netflix on it, even though it's only in SD quality unfortunately. But essentially, it just works. I didn't do any troubleshooting with my last install besides some DaVinci Resolve dependencies. Click on the video in the corner if you want to find out more. I don't miss Windows. I do miss some games like Destiny 2 and Valorant however, but it's not enough to convince me to switch back. The state of Linux is good, but it's just not good enough to achieve a widespread adoption rate. And this is why my videos sound so negative. I just tell how it is from my personal experiences and teachings. I talk about the gatekeepers, the newbie haters, the Nvidia problems and the overall compatibility. Not because I don't want people to switch or simply just to complain. I'm making my videos for those who want to know what to expect but also for the developers. Be it proprietary or open source, they could use the feedback. New users can switch if they watch my videos and feel confident about their hard and software. Developers can use the issues I point out and fix them. And trust me if I tell you this, if you are a developer that has been working for many years, then you often forget on how hard the beginning was. I mean, think about on how it was when you first got to school. And adding two numbers was basically impossible to do at first. It was hard then, but it's easy as heck now. Make a GUI for these people and listen to the complaints. It doesn't even need to be any good, just something. What's logical to you now might not be to most users. And yeah, again, this is why my videos sound so negative. But the truth is, they really aren't. They point out flaws from a user's perspective. Only from a user's perspective. Use this information as you will, and that's where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video then make sure to show it with a like and even subscribe to the channel. Make also sure to leave a comment down below if you agree with my points or how you feel about Linux yourself. Let us all know. Oh by the way, if you've liked this video then you're probably going to enjoy this one as well. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.